By the way, do watch on Jonathan Ross's comedy roadshow thing because it's ab- yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, fabulous. Um, hello, uh, thanks for having me. Um, I've recently started doing some charity work. I know. You have to tell people, otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> I say charity work, and I say charity work because I think that then people will think that I'm like bicycling through the rain, taking hot meals to, you know, lonely old ladies or whatever, but actually I'm just working in a charity shop. (laughs) So I'm basically just shopping for six hours a day, which is fantastic. Um, It's what I love, it's what I've done for years, anyone who knows me, my friend was like, gosh, that's very on brand, and I was like, I know, right? (laughs) Um, I've always shopped charity shops, I'm really into it, it's very sustainable, it's very good, it's basically philanthropy, but you leave with clothes, it's fantastic. (laughs) Um, I've loved it for ages, I'm really into clothes. I know, you wouldn't know that by looking at the way that I'm dressed. Um, but this is actually a very detailed pastiche of Lauren Metcalf in um, Roseanne. Um, yeah, fantastic. I'm really into clothes. Um, except she's wearing Reebok Classic, so she would appreciate it, I'm sure. Um, but I'm really into, as well, underwear. Give me a little nod if you like a bit of a matching set. Yes? Okay, okay. This is a perk of being the kind of perk, there aren't many, the kind of person that needs, that has uh, different areas that need a bit of attention in the underwear department. And I love a matching set, I really do. I think I've inherited this from my mum. She used to get us really nice underwear. But she would always do that thing where you'd get one bra and one pair of pants. And I was like, what? So you're just, what? So on a daily basis, your bra, pants, and they both, what, just go in the wash? Fuck that, come on, we're all doing it, aren't we? You're like, pants, in the wash, top, ooh, yeah, in the wash, bra. That's got another few days in it. That's definitely, am I the only person who's doing this? No, I'm absolutely not the only person who's doing this. I don't know why. My mum had this thing, and I don't know if anybody else was told this. I'm starting to think, as I was thinking about this bit, I was like, people are going to think she's weird. And she's a bit. Um, She would say... You wear a matching set of underwear. Always wear nice underwear. It doesn't have to be matching. Fine. Wear nice underwear because you never know when you might be in an accident. Has anyone else been told this? <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. You never know when you might be in an accident. By the way, hello to my mum who might be watching. Um, <laughs> she hasn't. She's got better things to do. Um, you never know when you might be in an accident, right? And you think, oh yeah, great, lovely. So a, param- so a paramedic might turn up at the scene of a horrible accident that you've had and be like, oh, this looks like a horrible accident, because that's literally their job. They arrive and go, you've had a horrible accident. I'm here in your horrible accident. And the first thing they're going to do is go, strip them. (laughs) Which is weird, because they fucking do. And I know this because I had a horrible accident a year ago, almost exactly. Thank you, we've just had our anniversary. Um, And they do, they cut your clothes off. Give me a nod if you've had this happen to you. No. Oh, we're a dying breed. Um, They they cut your clothes off, because I'm lying on the ground on concrete in October, actually it was the end of September, and you're freezing, and you think you might be about to die, and someone comes along who you think is gonna save your life, and they're like, I'm gonna cut your clothes off. (laughs) Which is the creepiest fucking thing to happen. I imagine they do it to see if anything's sticking out, like anything problematic. But what happened, basically, is that I lost the one pair of pants to a matching bra set that I had in this fashion. And I lost it. Several weeks later, I've got home and I'm starting to try and work out how to live with my injury, which it turns out is like this, because I've broken my pelvis on this side. Don't do it. Don't. No, not nice. Not nice. And I'm trying to put my pants on, and I've put them on on one leg, which is tricky enough as it is. And I've got there, and I'm like, great, ready to start my day. And I was like, why is this, why is this feeling weird? And it turns out, they had cut, and my lovely partner who is here, thank you, Skisa, has, has get, brought the clothes home from the hospital, put them in the washing machine, and not realised that they had cut the left arse cheek off my <laughs> pair of pants. I carried on with them for a few days, what can you do? Um, and I'll just finish this by saying that in the charity shop where I work, uh, the, <laughs> I was on the till the other day, because apparently I'm responsible, and a woman came up and she went, are you an actor? I was like... God, yes, God, because I am, it's true. I was like, why? And she was like, and I narrowed my eyes as if to say, because she was like, oh, I saw you in, and I did that. 
as if to suggest that there was anything other than one thing that she could possibly recognise. I was like, what could it possibly be? There are so many things. I said, what is it? Have you seen me in something? Have you seen me on the stage, on the screen? I just don't know. Um, and she went, oh, I saw you in that Happy Sad show, uh, which no one ever remembers the title of, because it was a really long title. It was a show called A Super Happy Story About Feeling Super Sad, and it was about the suicide. Very cheery. Um, but she recognised me from it, and I realised that I am never going to perform that show again. We were supposed to take it to New York at the beginning of the year. April 2020, great time to tour a show. It's never going to happen again, and that's largely because I start the show by saying, hello, my name's Sally, and I'm 16 years old. I've got a month to find a vaccine before I turn 35. I'm never going to play that fucking part again. Um, I've been Maddie. You can find me uh, at Maddie underscore MacMahon. Don't go on Instagram. I don't know how it works. Uh, and until... I don't know, the vaccine's found. I suppose I'll be cycling through the rain delivering hot meals to old ladies. Uh, cheers, guys.